Hello students. Welcome to your English literature class. In your previous session, you had started the reading of The Singing Lesson by Catherine Mansfield. Today, we shall continue the same. By the end of this video, you will be able to understand meanings of difficult words as used in the context, how a song becomes a reflection of Miss Meadows' mood, how students reflect their teacher's emotions, Miss Meadows' inner turmoil. So, open your Echoes textbook at page number 93. So far, you have read that Miss Meadows, a music teacher filled with despair, was walking down the corridor to reach the music hall. The girls, on the other hand, were filled with happiness and excitement. Mary Beasley, her favorite student, was there to play accompaniments at the piano. Miss Meadows was filled with anguish and in frustration asked the girls to maintain silence. The words of the letter sent to her by her fiancé, Basil, pierced her to the heart. Miss Meadows instructed the students to sing the sad song, The Lament, instead of the song that was already planned for the class. Before we start reading, note down the meanings of these difficult words. Gloom, Sadness, Contraltos, Lowest female voices in music, Scarcely, Hardly, Shuddering, Shivering, Stroked, Touched gently, Gleamed, Shone brightly, Nuisance, A thing which causes inconvenience or annoyance. Now let's begin the reading. Once again, said Miss Meadows, but this time in parts, still without expression. Fast, ah, too fast. With the gloom of the contraltos added, one could scarcely help shuddering. Now in these lines, Miss Meadows instructs the girls to sing the sad song, The Lament, without expression. The writer says that if one hears the girls singing the sad song in the low tones, one will shudder or shiver. Now children, pay attention to the lyrics of the song. Roses of pleasure fade quickly. Reflect what Miss Meadows is actually feeling. Happiness is short-lived and it can fade away any moment. Last time he had come to see her, Basil had worn a rose in his buttonhole. How handsome he had looked in that bright blue suit with that dark red rose. And he knew it too. He couldn't help knowing it. First, he stroked his hair. Then, his moustache. His teeth gleamed when he smiled. Now in these lines, Miss Meadows recalls the time when Basil had come to see her, he was dressed in bright blue suit and wore a red rose in his buttonhole and he looked quite handsome. The headmaster's wife keeps on asking me to dinner. It's a perfect nuisance. I never get an evening to myself in that place. These are the words spoken by Basil. Basil says that the headmaster's wife keeps on inviting him to dinner and he hardly gets time for himself. This is like a perfect nuisance. Now let's move on to the next slide. Note down the meanings of these difficult words. Wailed, moaned or cried. Willow trees. A willow tree is a tree or shrub of temperate climates which typically has narrow leaves and grows near water. Its timber is traditionally used to make cricket bats. Wriggled, twisted. Now let's read. But can't you refuse? 
Oh well, it doesn't do for a man in my position to be unpopular. When Miss Meadows asks Basil if he can't refuse the invitation, Basil tells her that he can't. If he refuses, men like him can become unpopular. So, he cannot afford to be unpopular. Music came measure, wailed the voices. The willow trees outside the high narrow windows waved in the wind. They had lost half their leaves. The tiny ones that clung wriggled like fishes caught on a line. Wriggle like fishes caught on a line. Children, we have a simile here. The author uses the word like to compare the leaves of the willow trees to the fishes caught on a line. Now, children, the willow trees had lost their leaves, and the ones that were left, the tiny ones, they twisted like fishes caught on a line. The author means to say that the leaves were shivering as if they were in pain like a fish that has been caught on a fishing line i am not a marrying man the voices were silent the piano waited i am not a marrying man are the words of basil that he had written in the letter while miss meadows on one hand is instructing the girls to sing a lament without feelings and expression on the other hand she is wondering what could have possessed basil to write such a letter she recalls his words in the letter i am not a marrying man the voices were silent the piano waited that means the girls have followed the instructions of miss meadows and now they are waiting for her further instructions now note down the meanings of these difficult words stony without emotions forte a thing at which someone excels lament a passionate expression of grief and sorrow drear cheerless now let's continue reading quite good said miss meadows but still in such a strange stony tone that the younger girls began to feel positively frightened but now that we know it we shall take it with expression as much expression as you can put into it think of the words girls use your imagination fast ah too fast cried miss meadows now in these lines miss meadows instructs the girls in such an emotionless tone that the younger girls begin to feel frightened now she instructs the girls to sing the song with expression she tells them to use their imagination and sing the song she wants the girls to find out the exact feeling behind the lyrics that ought to break out a loud strong forte a lament and then in the second line winter drear make that drear sound as if a cold wind were blowing through it so in these lines miss meadows instructs the girls to sing the song with expression they should sing in a way that it should appear that the word drear sounds like cold wind is blowing through it let's move to next slide note down the meanings of these difficult words awfully extremely disagreeable wriggled twisted crescendo a gradual increase in loudness this is mostly related to music settling down getting married disgust a strong feeling of disapproval drear said she so awfully that mary beasley on the music stool wriggled her spine now children miss meadows instructs the girls to sing in such a voice that even mary beasley who is sitting on the music stool wriggles her spine that is is terribly shaken the third line should be one crescendo fleetly ah fleetly 
म्यूजिक्स के मेजर ब्रेकिंग ऑन द फर्स्ट वर्ड ऑफ द लास्ट लाइन पासिस एंड देन ऑन द वर्ड अवे यू मस्ट बिगिन टू डाई टू फेड अंटिल द लिसनिंग ईयर इज नथिंग मोर देन अ फेंट विस्पर इन दीज लाइन्स मिस मेडोज टेल्स द गर्ल्स टू रेज देर वॉइस ऑन द थर्ड लाइन एंड बिगिन टू लोअर डाउन द टोन फ्रॉम द वर्ड अवे एंड फाइनली देर वॉइसिस शुड फेयर अवे सो दैट लिसनिंग ईयर साउंड लाइक अ फेंट विस्पर दैट इज इट शुड बी वेरी वेरी लो यू कैन स्लो डाउन एज मच एज यू लाइक ऑलमोस्ट ऑन द लास्ट लाइन नाउ प्लीज again the two light taps she lifted her arms again now children she taps with her baton the baton which is a sign of her authority and then she raises her arms for instructing the girls to sing fast ah to fast and the idea of settling down fills me with nothing but disgust now these lines the idea of settling down fills me with nothing but disgust are the contents of bases letter while she is instructing the girls to sing the song with expression her inner self is preoccupied with bases letter now let's move on to the next slide note down the meaning of this word feather bow a long thin piece of clothing like a scarf let's continue reading disgust was what he had written that was as good as to say their engagement was definitely broken off broken off their engagement people had been surprised enough that she had got engaged the science mistress would not believe it at first but nobody had been as surprised as she miss meadows feels that basil had used the word disgust which made her wonder whether their engagement was broken off when people had come to know about her engagement they were surprised the science mistress was not ready to believe at first that miss meadows was engaged to basil in fact miss meadows was herself more surprised than all other people she was 30 basil was 25 it had been a miracle simply a miracle to hear him say as they walked home from church that very dark night you know somehow or other i've got fond of you and he had taken hold of the end of her ostrich feather bow now why was miss meadows surprised herself she was surprised because she was 30 while basil was just 25 years old she thinks that it was a miracle when basil had told her that he had grown fond of her passes away from the listening ear repeat repeat said miss meadows more expression girls once more now while she is thinking about the contents of the letter she is instructing the girls to sing side by side fast ah too fast the older girls were crimson some of the younger ones began to cry big spots of rain blew against the windows and one could hear the willows whispering not that i do not love you crimson means deep red color now children the song was sung in such a way that the older girls had turned crimson author here uses a metaphor she says that the cheeks of the girls were as red as the color crimson itself the song had even worse effect on the younger girls they began to cry but my darling if you love me thought miss meadows i don't mind how much it is love me as little as you like but she knew he didn't love her not to have cared enough to scratch out that word disgust so that she couldn't read it soon autumn yields into winter drear she would have 
to leave the school too. She could never face the science mistress or the girls after it got known. She would have to disappear somewhere. Passes away, the voices began to die, to fade, to whisper, to vanish. These lines indicate that Miss Meadows was not troubled by the fact that Basil did not love her with full heart. What worries her is that if they do not get married, she will have to leave the school and she will have to go somewhere away from the science mistress and the girls to avoid embarrassment. Now, note down the meanings of these difficult words. Fussily up with small quick nervous movements. Aisle, passage, gasping, breathing laboriously. Let's continue reading. Suddenly, the door opened. A little girl in blue walked fussily up the aisle, hanging her head, biting her lips and twisting the silver bangle on her red little wrist. She came up the steps and stood before Miss Meadows. Now Monica, a little girl in blue, comes in. Her nervousness can be seen when she walks up the aisle, hanging her head, biting her lips and twisting her bangle. Well, Monica, what is it? Miss Meadows asked Monica, what is the matter? Oh, if you please, Miss Meadows, said the little girl, gasping. Miss Wyatt wants to see you in the mistress room. Monica informs Miss Meadows that the headmistress, Miss Wyatt, wants to see her in her room, that is in her office. Let's move to next slide. Subdued means made unusually quiet. Blowing their noses, an expression of crying. Disentangling, freeing from something. Blotting pad, a pad of blotting paper. Let's continue reading. Very well, said Miss Meadows. And she called to the girls. I shall put you on your honor to talk quietly while I am away. But they were too subdued to do anything else. Most of them were blowing their noses. Now instructing the girls to maintaining silence, Miss Meadows moves towards the headmistress office. She tells the girls to remain quiet. But the situation is such that the girls are already quiet. Most of them are crying. So you cannot expect them to make a noise. The corridors were silent and cold. They echoed to Miss Meadows' steps. Now children, here the author uses personification. The corridors were silent and cold and they echoed. The headmistress sat at her desk. For a moment, she did not look up. She was, as usual, disentangling her eyeglasses, which had got caught in her lace tie. Sit down, Miss Meadows, she said very kindly. And then she picked up a pink envelope from the blotting pad. I sent for you just now because this telegram has come for you. When Miss Meadows reaches the headmistress's office, she finds the headmistress, Miss Wyatt, trying to free her spectacles that were tangled with her lace tie. Then she tells Miss Meadows that she has called her to give her a telegram that she has received. Now let's move on to the next slide. A telegram. A piece of paper with a message sent by telegraph. Leaning. Bending. Now let's continue reading. A telegram for me, Miss Wyatt? Basil, he had committed suicide, decided Miss Meadows. Her hand flew out, but Miss Wyatt held the telegram back a moment. I hope it's not bad news, she said, so more than kindly. And Miss Meadows tore it open. On hearing the word telegram, Miss Meadows decided that there was definitely some bad news. 
she wondered if basil had committed suicide miss wyatt handed over the telegram to miss meadows saying that she hopes that the telegram does not bring any bad news miss meadows tears open the envelope and reads pay no attention to letter must have been mad bought hat stand today basil so this was a telegram from basil in which he informs miss meadows that she must not pay attention to his previous letter where he had written that he is not a marrying man he tells that he must have been mad while writing that letter then he informs her that he has purchased the hat stand she couldn't take her eyes off the telegram now miss meadows is so happy that she can't take her eyes off the telegram i do hope it's nothing very serious said miss wyatt leaning forward now when miss wyatt observes miss meadows reading the contents of the telegram she asks her if it is bad news in the telegram let's move on to the next slide note down the meanings of these difficult words blushed became red in the face apologetic feeling sorry approve of to support oh no thank you miss white blushed miss meadows it's nothing bad at all it's and she gave an apologetic little laugh it's from my fiance saying that saying that there was a pause i see said miss white and another pause then you have 15 minutes more of your class miss meadows haven't you miss meadows tells miss wyatt that it is not the bad news that she has received in fact it is a telegram from her fiance miss meadows experiences a complete change of mood here listening to miss meadows words that it is a telegram from her fiance miss wyatt reminds miss meadows that there are still 15 minutes more of a class yes miss wyatt she got up she half ran towards the door oh just one minute miss meadows said miss wyatt i must say i don't approve of my teachers having telegrams sent to them in school hours unless in case of very bad news such as death explained miss wyatt or a very serious accident or something to that effect good news miss meadows will always keep you know now while miss meadows is leaving miss wyatt warns her that in future she should not have telegrams in school hours unless it contains very bad news such as death or an accident because good news can always wait this brings us to the end of today's lesson your homework for today is to reread the text and revise the theme of appearance and reality thank you